A lot of you don't know this, but I do actually know a fair bit of things about the presidents of the US and I could probably probably name a few of them as well. I mean, probably like 25 to 30 of like the 46. So, you know, that's pretty good for a foreigner. And one of the presidents that I don't know a whole lot about, but I've heard some really bad comments is Woodrow Wilson. So I found this video from the YouTuber, uh, The Cynical Historian. And it's Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, he's like portrayed as a demon and it's, it's sort of uh, make it seem that he's the, the, the worst president or one of the worst presidents. And I know because I read this on Reddit that a lot of people were ranking him as one of the worst presidents. And I was kind of, kind of surprised. So, you know, without further ado, let's watch it and let's see if we find something interesting. But oh, yeah. It's finally time to talk about Woodrow Wilson. Wilson? I wrote a gargantuan script people on this do one. hate him, huh? So I'm going to split I mean, it maybe, into two maybe different he, parts. Probably he the first it, but... part is the time before he was president, and the second oh. one will be from then on. <coughs> so this is uh, right before he was president. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, Cypher here. And if you're new to this channel... Firstly, I am actually welcome. new to that channel. And second of all, you will probably find out that I've used Woodrow Wilson as a bit of a rhetorical punching bag for a while now. To say I despise the man is quite an understatement. Oh my god. And unlike how I normally attempt to put in some moral ambiguity and nuance just to avoid trying to be judgmental, I'm not really going to do that here. Wilson is highly deserving of a full-blown rant. Oh, and really? I get well, to be I guess we're going to find out. Because he was a historian, a pretty prominent... Was he the guy, because uh, by this time, uh, the Ku Klux Klan gained a lot of popularity. Was this the guy that... Something about a movie, right? And and uh, the movie The Birth of a Nation by the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan or the KKK. Was this the guy that transmitted the movie? Or, well, not transmitted. Uh, I don't know what's the word, but like he play the movie in the White House. Is this the president? I think he president is. wanted that. Now, Woodrow Wilson is a complex guy to say the least. I've read well over a dozen books in order to create these episodes. Wow, so a I dozen books. I would never books. be able to approach the complexity that they've managed to uphold. And as many of you already know, he's what I consider to be the worst U.S. president. But he also that's a, that's was a big one of claim. the worst historians I've had the misfortune of having to read. So the story of Woodrow Wilson begins with his father, Joseph Wilson. Joseph began life in the North, even publishing an abolitionist paper in the 1840s. But he moved south in order to get a professor job in Virginia. Over the course of the 1850s, while he was living in the South, he became more and more pro-slavery. Oh, During damn that it. time in 1848, Woodrow Wilson was born. As Joseph Wilson and his family moved deeper and deeper south, he became a pastor and became more and more radicalized towards pro-slavery and the Southern position. After the beginning of the Civil War, Joseph Wilson became a prominent part of the theological split that happened in the Presbyterian Church over the slavery issue, and he was part of the Southern side of that equation. During the war, he turned his church into a hospital and cared for Confederate wounded. This turn towards pro-slavery and seeing the destruction oh of the war. Hey, I'm, I'm of the opinion that a lot of this stuff has to be looked at with a grain of salt because, you know, 2020 is very different than 1850. But there are some things that even for that time were pretty bad. Was formative to Woodrow Wilson's ideology. Woodrow Wilson grew to despise the federal government, but he also <laughs> grew to loathe the Confederacy's failure. So he jumped to Johns Hopkins to get his PhD in political science in 1885, one of the first ever issued from that college. History degrees I mean, PhD, were still a fairly impressive. new phenomenon, and he was more focused on theory than truthful representation. Wilson's dissertation was extraordinary, given what he would later become in life. He used the entire thing to examine the political history of the U.S. federal government and see what its underlying nature is. In it, he says, The balances of the Constitution are for the most part only ideal. For all practical purposes, the national government is supreme over the state governments and Congress predominant over its so- That's interesting for a guy that uh, was supposed to hate the federal government. Called coordinate branches. By the way, uh, if you're liking this video, uh, please give it 
a like, you can subscribe to the channel, you can comment if you would like to see uh, the part two for this video. And if you have any other suggestion, you can put it in the comments. Yet he thought that the British parliamentary system was somehow better and that the current system enfeebled the president. He complains that all through the direct dealings of the Senate with the president, there runs this characteristic spirit of irresponsible dictation. <laughs> yeah, you'll see later how funny it is to hear good old Willie complaining about a lack of presidential power. His dissertation basically directed his career for the next two decades. He got some middling posts in various universities, even jumping from one contract to another, violating a couple of those contracts. Finally, he got a teaching position at his alma mater, Princeton, in 1890. He became well known for his oratory skills, because the man could give a hell of a speech, all of which underpinned by the kind of idealism he became famous for. Because of this, he became president of Princeton. That same year, he started publishing a series of history books that would give us the darkest look into his psyche. It started off as a five-volume set titled A History of the American People, later turned into a ten-volume set. It took a great deal to heart from the growing scholarship called New South Revisionism, which later became called Lost Cause Revisionism. Now, this was a trend happening throughout the history profession. They steadily tried to change the meaning of the Civil War and Reconstruction to portray the South in a more favorable light. It's not technically a bad goal, but they did so by distorting the truth tremendously, to the point that it's still an ongoing problem with political rhetoric yeah. today. Wilson bought into the whole states' rights and tariff stuff. I mean, even if you didn't care about the slavery issue, uh, it, it's still a nation that betrayed the U.S. It's a, a rebellious states, provinces that went to war and killed Americans. So even if you don't care about the slavery thing, which again, it's really, really important, right? But even if you leave that aside, as someone who uh, Woodrow Wilson would probably do, there are still a fair bit of things that the Confederacy did that were pretty horrible. ...as being the cause of the war, only denounced slavery on economic grounds, praised terrorist groups like the KKK as mm. if they were vigilantes, and demeans Reconstruction as though it was meant to punish the South. No comments. There have been a lot of historians who have tried to fight against this whole lost cause revisionism, but it remained fairly popular at the turn of the century. And Wilson... If I'm not mistaken, the song that's playing in the background is uh, Dixieland. Uh, I don't know the name, but I think it's the anthem for the Confederacy. And I think Dixieland is something to... Uh, mean like the, the the South? I don't know. If you know a little bit more about this stuff, I would obviously uh, love to it. learn more. Jim Crow laws had come about because of lost cause narratives, and Wilson was certainly a proponent of Jim Crow. But I must say, he was merely a part of the problem. But because of his lofty station in academia, he was even given the section on the lead up to oh, the... Damn, I mean, it's surprising, especially because he was a northerner. Like, hell, if he was, like, from the, the deep south, like, Mississippi, okay, well, you you can see. But, I mean, he's a northerner. Civil War in the 1907 Cambridge it really History is. of America. And it expressed the same ideology in its very name, states' rights. He also added to the ideology of American exceptionalism. Only a decade after Frederick Jackson Turner had written his own thesis... Wilson was propounding a similar viewpoint. A history of the American people. He used the people. shining city on a hill mentality, combined it with his evangelical father's views, the new idea of the social gospel, lost cause revisionism, okay, okay. Well, old father's views, the new... The social gospel was a form of Christian ethics that emphasized social just justice. The idea of the social gospel, okay. lost cause revisionism, and added his own racist form of progressivism to this heady mix. He believed that America was the new Jerusalem, chosen by God's grace oh, God. to be the exemplary country for oh, all barely. others, and had a duty to push its values internationally. Unfortunately, he would follow through with that imperialistic ideology, but not for a while. Of course, Wilson's ideology had World been War denounced I. by none other than Turner himself a decade prior, as well as a slew of other historians. No. They cautiously praised certain parts of the book. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt... I think, in my in my opinion, it's it's my favorite president. Okay, I just love his story. 
I love a lot of his uh, quirky little facts. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm guessing but there we're were not pleased bad things. with Lost Cause revisionism and the imperialistic overtones. But the history yeah, profession Roosevelt was fairly was young at that point in American history. And matter. so Wilson's problematic scholarship was overlooked for his predilection for grand eloquence. Because pretty words can cover oh. up sinister ideology. One of which happened to be Grover Cleveland, who pretty much immediately Another regretted president? giving him such power. It's Wilson's interesting because move pretty much uh, he was uh, president on two different occasions. He didn't have like consecutive terms. But from 85 to 89 and 93 to 97, which again, I, I think it's the only time that has happened, right? Immediately regretted giving him such power. Wilson's first move was to get the power to hire and fire faculty at will. He basically purged Princeton of all professors who didn't have graduate degrees, save for the dean of the graduate school, who would become a thorn in Wilson's side. He tried to push more things through, all but right. by 1906, disaster had struck. Wilson was prone to strokes. He might have had one in 1882, and he would have many more throughout his lifetime. As a result, he couldn't push through two reforms that he wanted to make. One which would get rid of the eating clubs that had been recently instituted and force professors and students to eat together. And the other was for making graduate students live with undergrads. But the graduate school dean fought him tooth and nail and managed to I mean, keep... I mean, I don't know much about American college or university life, so I can tell how impactful these laws are. Things separate. I'm barely understanding what he means. The students began to regularly to be protest Wilson's administration. He had many heated exchanges with the board of trustees and eventually took it to the press who sided with him. So while people at Princeton grew to despise him, he was popular outside the institution as a reformer. And he used that advantage in every way possible. Oh, so a building the, in Princeton uh, is there are still regular protests of the of his namesake building. Holy shit! The institution as a reform. I mean, if he's the worst and president, and he used that then, advantage yeah, in every way probably possible. Probably not a good idea. When Cleveland died in 1907, the papers were oddly quiet about his feud with Woodrow Wilson. Then, in 1910, he finally stepped into the public light as a candidate for New Jersey's governorship. Princeton's board seized the opportunity to fire him because he was campaigning for another position. Well, he got elected anyways as a Democrat because that was the party of the South, and he was a Southerner. His brief time as New Jersey's governor was tumultuous indeed. He pushed for a bunch of reforms over the next couple years. He managed to push out some corrupt election practices, pass numerous health laws, and regulate some labor policies. Seriously, a lot of good actually got done, perhaps the only irrefutable good he ever did. Of course, he wasn't around okay. very long to do the dislikable things he inevitably would have done, because he was off to the races again in record time. Wilson made it clear from his dissertation onward that he thought good orators should wield power, and he was a good orator after all. Lusting after power was his kind of thing, and so he took the next step in climbing up the political ladder El as Presidente. quickly as he possibly could. He put his name in for the Democratic nomination for president in 1912. Now, in a normal election, Wilson would have had absolutely no chance of being elected. The last Southerner Democrat who was elected was Zachary, Zachary Taylor. Taylor. And no matter how progressive of, of the ideals Mexican that he American espoused, War. he would have had that conservative taint that the nation had been moving away from steadily. Unfortunately, Republicans who were the actual... Yeah, but this was the election where... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Teddy Roosevelt ran uh, with the Bull Moose Party, his own po progressive party that he created, and then Taft ran for the Republicans, which meant that they split the vote and Wilson won. Bull progressives at the time had a bit of a falling out. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt was dissatisfied with the incumbent, Taft. So he had set up a rival party and sought to be elected over Taft. This backfired spectacularly because it split the vote. Wilson was elected with 42% of the popular vote. Talk about good luck. his opponents fared even worse in the electoral college. The devil has been elected. <laughs> Holy shit, that's... So Wilson was elected by a fluke. And all the bad stuff that came afterward We're was now because unleashed. of this fluke. Now, I've got to stop this somewhere because this is already pretty lengthy. 
So the second part will be about Wilson's presidency. Ah, Teddy Roosevelt, your one mistake. If you like this video, uh, you know, share, comment, tell me what you like about this video. And, you know, tell me, would you like to see part two? I'm honestly waiting to watch part two, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait if you guys like this one. You can always support me using the links on the description. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Champagne George. And that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.